Now let's speak to Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson. He's the former Chief of Staff to former Secretary of State Colin Powell. He's also a former State Department official, joins us live from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for your time. Now we've uh, seen pictures, the White House has just released pictures of uh, Obama's national security team watching uh, this operation to kill bin Laden and fold in Pakistan. Now I understand that you've been in the Situation Room. Tell us what happens in those moments in the Situation Room. How tense is it? Well, I can't tell you uh, about this pr president. I've never served him, but uh, I can tell you that for previous presidents, where I have been president, it, it was uh, very electrifying. It was uh, pressure filled, and the room is uh, very small. Uh, it's tight and uh, hardly hardly room to move around unless you're a principal in one of the big chairs. Um, lots of high tech uh, stuff there uh, since John F. Kennedy and the. Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961 where Kennedy felt completely out of touch with everything that was going on at that time and so afterwards uh, the White House Situation Room was renovated so to speak so that there'd be a lot of high-tech communications gear in there so the president would not be out of touch so mm. that's the sense the kind of Tom Clancy sense that you right. get from the Situation Room if everything everything's turned on. And what does it take to to um, set up an operation like this? We understand that this has been uh, being uh, in the work since uh, August of, of uh, last year. What does it stake and how much secrecy is there? Because this didn't leak at all. Uh, this uh, operation, uh, information didn't leak at all regarding this operation. Right, and that's, that's important, I think, and your lead in uh, indirectly said why. Uh, the Pakistanis were told nothing about this. Um, others in the region were told nothing about this. I'm quite, cer I'm quite certain. Uh, and that's what keeps the leak from happening and that's what keeps the target, in this case Osama bin Laden, from being warned and getting out of the area. Uh, keeping it very quiet, keeping it very secret and keeping it away from all those except those who need to know is essential to the success of a special operation like this. Mm. Now, uh, Mr. Wilkinson, you served uh under uh, Colin Powell. Uh, how do you explain that uh, Barack Obama was able to succeed in just two years where Bush failed in eight years? What was it that made it successful for him? It couldn't have just been luck, could it? Well, first of all, let me say that uh, this, is, this is a success I, I, and I'm, I'm elated that there is closure for some of the victims, uh, the mass murdered, if you will, of this mass murder. Uh, but this is not a moment for us to celebrate. This is a moment for us to be humble, magnanimous, and, and to move on, mm -hmm. uh, be very professional about this. Um, I, I will say that uh, the Bush administration, my administration, and I'm blaming myself here too, we took our eye off the ball when we invaded Iraq. Iraq had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11, nothing to do with Al-Qaeda. We invited Al-Qaeda into Iraq by invading it. And when we took our eye off the ball and went into Iraq, we took the focus off Afghanistan. So yes, there were wasted years with President George W. Bush and Vice President Dick Cheney. Um, they simply took their eye off the ball, mm -hmm. went into Iraq and let Afghanistan just simmer off on the side. So and President Obama came in and reestablished the priority in Afghanistan and we see what happens. Uh, a couple of years later, we finally achieved what was our ultimate objective to get Osama bin Laden. But some are also saying that invading Afghanistan was not necessarily the right thing to do. And the Afghans themselves today saying uh, we are also the victims on the war on terror. Osama bin Laden was captured in Pakistan. He was not in Afghanistan, as was believed back in 2001. Do you think that was the right decision to invade Afghanistan? I do think it was the right decision. At the time, the Taliban were the recognized government of Afghanistan. They were given ample opportunity to turn bin Laden over, just, not just after 9-11, which was true, they were given opportunity after 9-11, but before 9-11, and they refused to do so. So it wasn't just al-Qaeda that we were going after in Afghanistan. It was the Taliban who had aided and abetted, given him succor and support. And we are still in Afghanistan for at least partially that reason that the Taliban are still there and threatening the, the government, uh, such as it is, in Kabul. But can you still justify U.S. presence in Afghanistan today? I mean, the U.S. public is increasingly wary of this war. Now that bin Laden has been captured, is there reason to stay in Afghanistan? Uh, if you're asking me personally, I say no, because I think what we're doing by our continued presence in Afghanistan is destabilizing a far more important country strategically, and that's Pakistan. 
Um, Ninety percent of the people in the Fatah area, for example, have said in poll after poll that their number one enemy is not Islamabad, not India, not the Taliban, not Al Qaeda, but the United States of America. That's hardly a situation where we're adding to the stability of Pakistan. So we need to leave, and we need to leave expeditiously, because we are destabilizing that very important country with what many people don't realize, a larger pro pro population in Pakistan than in, in Russia. This is an important country with nuclear weapons, and we need to allow the civilians there uh, to get control of that country, and our presence and our actions inside their borders are destabilizing for them. Okay. And so we do, need to, uh, we do need to leave. Well, thank you very much for your thoughts. Uh, Lawrence Wilkinson, former chief of staff to Colin Powell, joining us there live from Washington, D.C. Thank you for your time, sir. Thanks.